Hello, Ritu. I am so excited to have you here today to share about this transformative experience that you've had. I would love to have you share whatever was going on in your life leading up to that and then going into the experience. All right. Yeah. So I will begin with mentioning that since I was a child, I had inner divine knowledge about reincarnation. I remembered a couple of my past lifetimes. I was born into a Hindu family in India, but my atmosphere did not talk about these things. I mean, it's something in the air, but not to my home environment. It wasn't where these conversations happened. So it was just internally within me. And there was something else that I remembered that my life is going to have lots of challenges. It's going to be very painful. I am not to give up. Don't end, ending your life is not a, ever a solution. It never ends. Just because you think that you ended your physical life, you still have to learn, you still have to grow uh, to learn whatever you were meant to learn through whatever life presented to you. And that the purpose of life uh, for me and in general for everybody is to learn wisdom. And it was like, these were just concepts. I didn't know what these words meant, but I had this knowledge. I could not put a context to it, but I knew that there is there will be some challenges coming my way. So um, be prepared for that. And in that context, also what I felt was I did not belong. I could not understand why people were not talking about where they came from, where they're going, what is the meaning of life? And looking around me, people just eating breakfast, lunch, and then partying and going to the movies and and then it was, uh, I mean, beyond shocking to me. It's like, is nobody concerned about, let's talk about these things. So I, in my innocence, thought everybody just already knows this. And I'm the one <laughs> who's figuring it out. So somehow people are not wanting to talk about these things. So at the same time, I had this tendency I was a very, very private person, extremely timid, extremely scared, almost like terrorized by everything that's going on around me. I did not have a sense of belonging at all. I did not recognize my family. I was like, who are these people? Where am I? But Everything was confusing and I had certain gifts. I could see auras. I could sense the feelings, which later on I recognized as being very empathic and highly sensitive. And it was, you know, it's like always overstimulated with all of this sensory input that's coming into me. I was so withdrawn. I was so confused. And uh, then uh, life went on and I was, I was a person with no sense of boundaries. An empath with no sense of boundaries is a, a total danger to herself or himself. And so you get subject to abuse and trauma and um, just accepting, uh, you know, being so such a gentle soul, 
accepting of whatever is being told to you. So I'm taking in the culture, I'm taking in whatever others are telling me to do. And so every step of my way, every choice, every um, decision was made out of confusion and fear. And that was very rocky for me. It made me feel like I am unwanted. I am, I have to justify my existence and that there is, there is like no love anywhere. It's just sense of betrayal. I am a burden. So just these deep, I could not name these feelings. It was just much later on when I unpacked them that I'm able to put words to these. But this was what was going on inside me. And I um, just had no answer to these, these all these questions and, and how scared I felt inside. So I had built these walls around my heart. And in that process, when I was 21 years old, my guru, he's an enlightened master and, the, and a highest yogi, he came into my life, into my family's life, but I felt being an empath, I felt this beautiful sense of like peace and love coming from him, just a little bit, I would say I was still not very open, but and I saw some miracles happening the very first day I went to his ashram. And that made me feel for the first time I could open up and ask him some questions. And my first question was, is there really a physical heaven or hell? Because I was so terrified of it. I was always terrified of taking any wrong step anywhere. And in that process, you know, I had been doing everything what was expected of me from others and what I was told I should be doing. And so my first question was, is there physical heaven or hell? And my Guruji now at that time, I did not know what a guru is, but like he's a saint. And he looked at me and said, no. There is no physical heaven or hell. It is all your own state of mind. It was a little surprising answer to me. I did not really understand what it meant. And then I asked some other question, which I've tried to remember what it was. I don't remember, but he just looked at me and he said, all the answers are within you. You go experience them for yourself. And there was this sense of finality to it. You know, it's almost like you cannot ignore that. Like, that's full stop. This is what you are meant to do. And you are not to expect any more discussions or question on or answers uh, coming your way. So after that, I um, life landed me in USA. And uh, more situations, traumas happened. And because everything was, uh, you know, the decisions I've had made were not aligned with my sole purpose. And I was doing what was. So I landed up in IT career. I loved it. And during that process, I started having lots of experiences, out-of-body experiences and um, spiritual experiences, and I could not understand. And they were spontaneous. I did not understand it. And I also had this almost like a pre-birth vision where I am being told that uh, you have to go now. And I'm like, no, 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 this is too much pain. This is too much pain. I can't go. No, no. I, it's like, you know, as if you had said you will go, but at the very last minute, you are freaking out. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not ready. 
And um, and it's like, no, now you have to go. So that was my guru. And he's like, no, you have to go and whoosh. You know, it's like I landed it. I That whoosh is like you have these drive through ATMs and uh in the banks these day how when you push your put your deposit when you're going through drive through and how the tunnel just sucks up or the shoot that comes down your uh deposit statement or you know so it was like a uh, hundred times faster kind of like that it's like whoosh and i landed into my body so I had this vision of like, oh, this is all pre-scripted. But, you know, somewhere I'm understanding. Um, and I never doubted there is God. I did not know anything about God. It's just whatever you're hearing in the air. And uh, what does really God mean? So I was always uh, concerned about these questions. And during that time, I decided I'm going to try some meditation. My guru never gave me any instructions to follow through. Although later on, I found out that with every single person who comes to him to get initiated, they get a set of instructions. He never gave me any, any of that. And it's almost like I'm supposed to figure things out on my own. I'm supposed to experience them. So when I went to two, three places uh, sporadically on and on, on and off to take um, join meditation, I would get this feedback. Oh, you have so much sensitivity to energy. And uh, like people meditate for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years before they get this kind of sensitivity and like, what are they talking about? So I'm from a very intellectual background. I, I'm a software engineer. And, you know, so, and, and what is this language? It's not making sense to me. And then some of these groups where I'm going, there are psychics in there because you know they're coming for meditation. And then some now and then they would pop up and say, oh, I'm having, I'm being told to give you this message. You're going to be speaking in public. Like, what do they mean? This is impossible. I don't know anything. I am so confused. And I don't have a voice like I was, people would make fun of me, my coworkers, that I don't speak at all unless it was really work related. I did not get into chit chats. I was such a quiet person. Like, this is all impossible things I don't understand. And so um, I ended up in at this, uh, it was a, a spiritual or metaphysical bookstore, they, she used to hold uh, meditation classes in her back room of the store. So I went to that book. So I was getting these dream downloads, like answers to, my heart was yearning for answers and I would get these dream downloads. And sometimes these, in my dream, there would be this Catholic nun and that was one of the lifetimes that I would remember that I know, I understand what it is to be a nun. It's like I can feel, I can see, I can hear what's going on in the convent. And like I can feel myself inside the body of a nun, which is, has absolutely nothing to do with uh, what my life is about. I didn't know what it meant. And so I would get these answers and I would wake up feeling ecstatic that, oh, I got the answer. But like, wait a minute, it wasn't in a language I understand. So I am thinking maybe those were in Latin or something. And my, that nun self in the dream would be so thankful, would be so happy for getting that answer. So it was like, 
all of this information is almost like getting, I'm wanting to seek it. It's coming to me in a very subconscious way, but I'm not getting from my conscious mind. I'm not getting any answer. And this is before internet, before cell phones. And, and I, my environment thing to give me access to any of the resources. So, and then uh, after I've had some of these dreams and I'm looking, what does it mean when the, there are images in my dreams? And I know that these hold like profound answers to life and purpose of life, but I'm not understanding that. And then in that process, one day I'm at a different bookstore <laughs> trying to scrounge through books, like, well, which one has my answer? I didn't get that. But there was this person, a Caucasian white male. He came to me. My friend was with me, both of us. And he just approached me and started talking to me. And I felt completely trans, as if I'm nailed to the ground. And while he's talking to me, we started walking towards the outside because the store was going to close soon. And I'm completely transfixed into what all he's explaining to me. And we are sta standing outside by the parking lot. We were there for over an hour. I don't remember a whole lot. It's almost like my memory just completely cleared. But what I remembered was he knew everything about me, my whole life, and what all had happened and all the coping mechanisms I had developed and how they were now blocking me. I did not need those mechanisms anymore. And he wanted to bring... He, brought all of them up as if he knows everything. You know, when you were five years old, you know when that happened and you know when that happened. And it's not even occurring to me at that time that how come this person knows? I'm just totally transfixed and I can't move. I'm glued, I'm nailed to the ground. And then he started demonstrating to me how sensitive I am to the energy. So he showed me, so he did some demonstrations and he had me join him into, can you sense this? Can you sense that? Tell me when you sense this. And that's like, this is it. This, this is how sensitive you are to the energy. It's like, what are these? At that time, I couldn't think of anything. And my friend is standing next to me the entire time. His attention is 100% on me, as if my friend does not even exist. So, so after that hour was over, when he finished talking to me, then he said, okay, I will, I'll take your leave now. I'm going to go. And as soon as he went to his car, and he opened the door, it's like I suddenly jolted out of that being in that transfix state. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, who, like, what is your name? And what's your phone number? Give me something. What if I need to talk to you? I want to get some answers. And so he told me his name, but he said, well, I'm here. I'm around you all the time. I'm here all the time. And when you need me next, I'll be there. And, and then he got in the car and left. And my friend was so upset with me because <laughs> she did not allow me to process what had happened. She's like, how dare he? How come he never talked to me? He was... <laughs> as if I didn't even exist. And all these years later, she still t is upset about that. <laughs> so she looked and looked for him because she said, well, he says, I'm always here. So she went to that place. She inquired for months 
and nobody had ever seen him. Nobody had ever known about him. So in all of this, like I have to find out what is this energy thing that keeps popping up for me. And in that process, I went to this, found this uh, metaphysical bookstore, and she was also teaching uh, energy healing. And so I wanted to talk to her, the owner of the bookstore. And she said, well, you know, you join my meditation group and we meet. So that place was 40 minutes away from my house. I would go sometimes from directly from my office to over there. So it would be late in the evening. And during one of those days, I was in deep meditation. I did not even realize that everybody had left already. But since it was in the back room, she let me just sit there. And suddenly when I came out of meditation, I was feeling very peaceful, but it wasn't like any anything else had happened or I got any answer. So I was feeling a little disappointed. <laughs> like, oh, this seemed to be a very deep meditation, but I still didn't get any answers. I should scramble in front of the store to her and see, ask her, does she know answers to any of these questions I have? And, but I noticed that she was also hurrying up to close the store and leave. And there was just nobody and it was dark outside. So feeling a little disappointed, I was like, okay, I'll talk to her next time. I stepped into the parking lot. There was just, it was a very small parking lot. It was mainly all residential area, right where the shop was. And there were only two cars in there, her car and my car. And I'm like, hmm, you know, in a kind of peaceful but disappointed little state of mind, I sat in my car and put on my seat belt and put my key in the ignition. And as soon as I did that, I heard this explosion. And for a split second, I thought my car blew up. It was so loud. And, but the next instant, I was in this void. It was like 360 degree. And you know, after having listened to and heard so many of them, nobody's able to really put words to explain how it feels, but we use some language terminology but it was this total void and there was nothing but love. And this love was purer than pure. It was something that you cannot even touch. You cannot touch it. You cannot, like no matter what happens, it, you cannot stain it. And everything was that essence, that love. It, it wasn't like things are made of love. It is made of love. It was love. And it was like you take a cloth and you dip it in bucket of water and you take it out and it's just over the, how the water just drips when you're holding it, it was like, it's just overflowing. It's not trying to be something. It's not trying to create. It's not trying. It's just love and it's just dripping. It's just overflowing. And those drops of love, that dripping is the whole manifestation, it's manifesting everything, the, the, everything that we see, the, the nature, the tree, the, every blade of grass, it's just the, just the automatic overflow dripping of that love and everything, the essence is love. 
And I notice next thing is that I'm flying in space. There are these billions of stars, more than lightning speed, a hundred times faster than lightning speed is just coming. And then, but it's just before it hits me or touches me, it's just dissolving. And this entire time, I have no sense of physical body. It, I have no sense that I'm not even aware of that this is happening at this time. It's after the experience when I sat down to recall, to put it into words. So it, that's what's happening. And I am bawling. I'm crying and there's just overwhelm and my heart is just going to explode. I, it's like a mixture of just overwhelm from that love and that sense of separation you know it's just heart is between overwhelmed and breaking of you know, like how is this separate from me and it's almost like i don't know how long that was but like a gear shift like like a little how gear shift like a little jerk happens and the next moment i am it i am that absolute love i am everything i am that overflowing love and it is all me and i am all pervading i am the all per pervasive and next instance with the jerk i notice i am this macro self i am this cosmic love and then here i became aware of my mini self i'm not aware of my physical body i'm not aware of the fact where i am but that there is this presence, this mini self, and this mini self is bawling and crying and still f flying through the space and these stars coming. And I, and I see that I am that drop. I am that essence of this mini self is this essence of love and that this macro self, cosmic self, is wanting to experience itself through this mini self. And it's just, and it's, it is yearning and, and, and uh, yearning to know how this mini self is going to experience connected to this love and bring that experience and that's cosmic self's ecstasy and as ecstatic i am so it's like this full um this invisible wave love wave between the two so then suddenly I became more aware of my mini, both simultaneous. And I'm thinking, well, if I am this cosmic self, I am it, I am everything, then what is this, what is this mini self? How does this mini self know? that there is this separation. Where is this coming from? Who is processing this knowing, this knowing? And then, because I was not aware of my physical body, but somewhere where the head is, you know, around this area, my head, I was like, okay, if I, that is where something is that's processing this information. And then this just overwhelm, just bawling, bawling the whole time. And I'm saying, how, 
how do we forget this? How did I forget? How does everybody forget this connection? How do we hate? Where is this violence coming from? How are we not remembering this? And while I am bawling and crying, I turn my ignition key off. And it's like by this time it's all happening. And I notice that's the first time I notice that I am in my driveway. First time I became aware of the physical reality. And I am just soaked in love. It's like I am love. But in almost like in that intoxicated state, it must have been about 10 p.m. by that time. I'm just calculating because I did not know how I drove all the way back to home. And I went into my house, all the lights were turned off and everybody else in the house was sleeping. And then I changed my clothes. And so it almost like a pause was put on this whole experience that was happening. And I sat in my bed and it was like, pause, play, and then play started again. And now I'm just soaking in love. And now I'm hearing these chants. It's like I am in some other dimension. And these Sanskrit chants where it's almost like thousands of yogis and sages are doing these Sanskrit chants in the holy fire ceremonies that they do call yagyas. They are doing that. And it's just in unison, like chorus, these chants are happening. And they're all around me. And this incense, the smell from the fire ceremonies they're doing. And the closest I can say is to like sandalwood, but it's totally indescribable smell smell it's just filling up my nostrils and filling up my forehead and it's like every cell every fiber of my body is just with this love and the sounds and the smell it's like it's just every cell is going to just explode into a million pieces and I reached a point where I said, it's almost like I screamed silently. I cannot stand this anymore. It was almost like not me, but you know, it was just, I was going to explode. It was too much for my nervous system to handle that. It's like, and the second I said that, it stopped. The smell and the sound stopped, but I was still in that very intoxicated state of feeling the bliss of love. And I must have fallen asleep for a few minutes and then I had to get up and go, go back to work the next day morning had happened. So I am assuming that I was sitting there for hours because um, I hardly slept. And then I had to get up, the alarm went off and I had to go to work. And so I'm still very intoxicated. And then after that, after I reached my work, uh, soon after that spontaneous, uh, um, I would guess uh, uh, spontaneous deep meditations were happening because I would completely zone out. I'm sitting, uh, I reach work or I'm ready to leave work and time would lapse where I wouldn't even know 
uh, one hour went by and so more and more inside me it was just coming this is not what I came here to do this is not my life path this is not what I'm meant to be doing and then other occurrences were happening I will just briefly mention so this uh, the one most transformative experience that I talked about in that I would also add it was like there was no time, there was no, some, nothing called time or space. And I have described it as zero, as infinity within zero, zero multiplied by infinity. It's like there is everything because all of this love drops, that's the infinite ex expansion, manifestation, out of zero, zero that is complete. So it's nothing yet it's complete and infinite. <laughs> That's my mathematical <laughs> logical formula, zero multiplied by infinity. And, uh, <clears throat> but it's like, you know, my mind is trying to grapple with this. Like I still want to understand how is this? I know I've experienced this. So more occurrences started happening where my etheric body would just step out of my physical body and would it would show me things and then it would march back. I had no terminology for any of this, but I am noticing that there is something that's a duplicate of me. And later on, I learned this is what we can call a theoretic body that's is our gross body is you know just bones and muscles and and all of that uh, just a gross body on top of the where the etheric body is and um in one of those so all of these sounds started coming later on i learned from my guru that as you are progressing spiritually, these uh, unstruck sounds start coming. Some of them are like chirping of birds and um, bells. And then as you progress, then it's like thunder, lightning, like those kind of sounds that go, um, you tend to hear. I didn't know at that time, but some of those sounds would come and I would be so confused. It's like, who's making these sounds? Not realizing I'm the only one listening to them and that they are happening inside of me. And those would uh, be distracting to me in the beginning because I'm trying to logically understand that. And then on one of those days, I uh, there were not very female software engineers where I was working. So I had this liberty to escape to the restroom because there was uh, it was typically empty. So one of those days in the very beginning, I walked into the restroom and I sat down in the stall, I closed it. It's like, what is this sound? What is this happening to me? I don't understand. What is this? So I was feeling this Kundalini energy and I didn't know about it. It's like just energy waves that come within me. What does it mean? And um, when I'm sitting there, so suddenly, and this is out of body, that it's uh, like another void, but it's like a lot of clouds. Like there's this tower, there are mountains, and there is this cloud. And um, I'm asked, I'm being taken up up to the mountain to like a tower up I'm taken and then I'm told and then there's this door and I'm told uh, open the door and I open the door and I see it's like a cloudy abyss there is nothing and I don't even know where this goes it's like a very foggy misty cloudy abyss and and I just get the instruction, jump. And I just jumped. And later, I did not know the meaning of that at that time, but later on I understood the meaning of that. 
And then right after that, I was whisked into a kind of back from top, like how spirits come. There is this stage, like a theater, and there is a stage uh, play going on. And there are five different scenes going on the stage. The audience is sitting, thousands of people, and it's all dark. But on this stage, there are five different scenes going on of the same person in different lifetimes, uh, different uh, time periods for that person. So one could be from 1800s, one could be the present, one could be from 10,000 years ago or, you know, but all you notice this light is on this present scene in the middle of the stage and they ask me to look and so all I see is this light on this present moment going on in this person's life and then they see then they tell me to look look more carefully and when I look more carefully like I have some vision like a bat <laughs> to see in the dark when I look more carefully, then there are all these other scenes also going on. It's just you don't see them because they're in the dark on the stage and the audience doesn't see it either, but they are happening on the same stage. It's just when the light will fall upon that is when you will see that scene. And so I had this immediate, so immediate understanding that this is how it's it's like it's all multiple all the mul multiple dimensions multiple realities are all happening simultaneously and it's just what you are focused on right now that's what you are aware of and that's what you see. And so this is the way it's in zero. It's almost like that's zero space. The simultaneous realities are happening. And some of my other experiences that had happened were also this awareness of simultaneous multiple realities. And um, so those were also the answers I had wanted. So this was like uh, being explained to me. And, um, and so I just suddenly um, I became aware, oh, I'm sitting in the stall. And I again got concerned. I don't know how long I've been sitting here. And I didn't <laughs> you know, want to be. Well, you know, uh, people to miss me, where is she? So I, the jerk, I got up and I went out of the, um, into the hallway. And as I'm walking into the hallway and it's like, I'm really uh, almost like groggy. And I notice with uh, uh, lightning speed or whatever is faster than lightning speed. My etheric body is like wanting to catch up with me, like your double that's just wanting to enter your body. And so that was the first time I had that, but after afterwards I had a lot of those. So little, these were some of the um, experiences uh, that I was happen, having immediately after that. And it was just more and more, this just, I just couldn't, uh, even though I loved it so much, I loved my work and I was so successful and I was making them, you know, money I wanted to make. And this was like the so-called, you know, you, you've arrived in a way at the more material level kind of um career-wise, and yet there is this conflict that was uh, came up in me um, that this is not the path for me, and then rest of my journey, but eventually uh, there were other um, beings, you can say, that came to keep, keep on guiding me to, I was, even though I was terrified, 
you know, there was no logical way for me to explain to anybody why I suddenly want to quit that and give up everything and uh, take a 180 degree turn. And it just kept coming up more and more for me that I'm meant to do something with energy work, some kind of energy work. And um, that is where then I made that transition. And I, I had no support and I totally understand that. I had totally, it was, I was so scared of making a jump into the unknown, leaving everything that I had worked up up to that point but I just knew I just couldn't do it anymore I just couldn't not that I couldn't like something inside me just could not carry on with that and I quit my career and then I started doing I uh, learned that I was I felt most attracted to Reiki as the form of energy healing and I started doing that and during that process, a lot of miracle healings happened. And um, intuitively, I was being guided to do certain um, uh, certain type of modalities um, like acupressure, reflexology, which I would do it first and then I would research, what was it? And then I would find out, oh, it was this method, this method. And it was just, I loved it so much. Then I would learn it. And um, that's how I also became a licensed massage therapist. And so I, uh, during that process, I was learning so much about healing, about life, about myself, about people. And one of the main things, the main takeaway from all of those years of doing the healing, energy healing work was <clears throat> I saw that people have so much trauma inside them, so much of uh, emotions, so many of blockages. And because of those emotional blockages, how it's impacting people's energy, the chi inside them, and how that creates physical disease, and how that impacts what uh, beliefs we form about ourselves, about life, and how that impacts our thought process and how then that um, manifests in our, into our actions and how those actions then create this karmic cycle, what we can call like karmic cycle and how that keeps us in this whole reincarnational cycle. And so in that process, of course, that was learning for myself also to know what are my, I started getting in touch with my own blockages and all that lifetime of coping mechanisms that I had and, and that how critical it is to release, acknowledge, identify and release the, uh, the traumas because I realized that no matter how many spiritual experiences you have, that is not an automatic bypass to you resolving your uh, emotional and mental beliefs, uh, limiting paradigms uh, and the blockages. Those are, that's where you have to put in the effort. You have to have the willingness to, to process those. And spiritual experiences and the meditation will actually make it much more clearer for you what is it that you need to process. So, so then I started looking into, it organically developed into me doing spiritual counseling and then people automatically wanting to talk and it's like so much of trauma we hold for not having been heard. Like that's what I found before people 
uh, feel like nobody understands me, nobody hears me. That is there someone, like so much of the love, the separation that we feel within ourselves and from others is one way to show that love is to really be, give that space and presence to someone, to listen to them. And um, that was organically the process where then I started working with Compassion Key as one of the modalities to help people clear their blockages and uh, know that uh, just um, meditating or just having spiritual experiences is not enough for you to get to moksha because it's not about salvation. It's not about heaven or hell. It is your state of mind. Heaven and hell is your own state of mind. And that is where we need to put in the effort. That's what I'm doing, practicing now. Ritu, thank you so much for sharing. I have so many questions I want to ask you. And so we will definitely have to do this again. But I loved hearing about your life leading up to your experience and then the details of that experience and your journey since then. And one thing that you said that rings so true for me is that the meditation and the spiritually transformative experiences are not enough, that they're not enough to get you to that state of consciousness where you're experiencing that inner peace and joy as a way of life. And so I would love to potentially talk more with you about that in the future. But right now, I want to give you an opportunity to share with the viewers where they can find you online. You have a website and I believe a YouTube channel, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's Spiritual Route, spiritual r-o-u-t-e that is all one word so my website is www.spiritualroute.com my facebook page is facebook.com spiritual route my youtube is youtube.com spiritual route and there are certain playlists that have other interviews also and um I plan to be more consistent in adding more material. And so anyone can reach me through the contact page on the website. I have several articles and my YouTube channel also has playlists about my guru, my Guruji and his uh, the miracles and biography and uh, when I connected to my lifetime as the nun, then I was also found my connection with Lord Jesus. And I understood why I feel so much love and so much attraction to Jesus and the tears, tears, tears that automatically start rolling down a few times I've been to the church. So then listening to hearing about his story and every movie that has been made about him i watched and i looked at his miracles and so my guruji uh has has had the same miracles has those and a hundred times more in quantity and more variety of uh, miracles so some of them i have put in english in playlist and some of them in hindi so those are some of the ways. Well, thank you so much for doing that. I'm actually going to go watch those now because I am very curious. Um, having been raised in the Christian faith and taught about Jesus and the miracles that he did. And of course, we're taught in Christianity in some branches of Christianity that we have the same abilities to do what Jesus did. I'm always so fascinated to hear about people who are living that. So 
I'll be checking that out. Yes, my Guruji's name is Swami Mohandas Ji Maharaj. And yes, he is a living example of uh, uh, everything Lord Jesus talked about and 100 times more. Wow. Wonderful. Well, I'm so excited for our for this conversation and for our future conversations. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much, Melissa. It's a blessing to be able to connect with you and have this conversation. Thank you.